Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team and there's a couple of different things that I want to talk to you guys about today. A couple of things dealing with UFOs, UFO sightings, strange typical things we always talk about, but the main topic that I want to start with today is what appears to me and to many who've been emailing me about this is this sudden rush by damn near everyone, everyone that counts anyway, to get us back to the moon and quick. And that is the question today. Why does everyone want to go to the moon so suddenly? Because before, just to preface this, we went to the moon. Okay, they were called the Apollo programs. And during each uh, of these different Apollo programs, uh, starting in the 50s through the 60s, early 70s, on almost all of them, uh, there were a few that uh, things happened. Apollo 13, we weren't able to actually land on the moon. But most of the Apollo missions got men to the moon and we landed on there, where we were able to do our different science experiments, collect moon rocks, ride around on moon buggies, and pretty much do everything we needed to do. And so, you know, over the years, of, of course, there's been an uprising of people saying, hey, we would like to go back to the moon. When are we going to go back? And the government, at least the administrations, you know, in the past here has always kind of taken this attitude of, well, we've already been to the moon. We did everything we needed to do. And so we really just don't have it in our budget to go to the moon. Many of them have said we, we don't even have the technology anymore to get a man to the moon, land on the surface, and then get him home, which is really funny considering that the, the, uh, the uh, technology that was used in the aircraft, the spacecraft, to get these men to the moon during the Apollo programs used as much computer data as what's in your uh, watch. You know, your, your watch or your timer on your microwave or your stove. That's all it took to get them to the moon. And so to tell us today that we don't have the technology, well, there's something up with that. They either don't want us to go to the moon because they don't want us to see what was there, whatever was there that they saw when they went, or maybe we just don't have the technology or maybe they just don't care. I mean, I highly doubt we don't have the technology. It's very simple stuff to get us there. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to preface just to say, you know, we have been to the moon many times. We have many probes there that are circling the moon. We've mapped it out in uh, satellite imagery. Well, multiple other countries have landed probes down on the moon, recently Russia and China. And so we've done a lot, you know, but, but basically the consensus between all of these major companies and nations was, well, the moon thing has been done, all right? Next, we want to go to Mars, or we want to go to Europa. We want to go to some of these other planets out there. The moon has been and done. It's old news. We know what's there. There's nothing there, so let's move on to something more interesting. So let's get to what's happening right now with this sudden urge for everybody to get us to the moon and not just get us to the moon, but get us there fast, which obviously leads to another cluster of theories as to why they are trying to get us there fast with talks of a potential breakaway civilization as if something is coming towards Earth or something is going to be happening on Earth that would lead the big wigs around, you know, the country, the top people to say, hey, we need to start getting our people to the moon, getting our moon bases set up, and, and just getting everything started in preparation for whatever is going to happen here on Earth. But we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. So first news story here, why does everyone want to go to the moon? Um, we will discuss Blue Origin. Uh, if you don't know, Blue Origin is now running to put Americans back on the moon by 2024. Uh, Blue Origin operated and is backed by none other than Jeff Bezos, the uh, president CEO of Amazon, who apparently recently unveiled a mock-up lunar lander at the mysterious invite-only event in Washington, D.C., the Amazon CEO, Jeff Bezos, has also revealed the ambitious next steps for his aerospace company at a highly secretive media event in Washington, D.C. this past Thursday. During the event, which kicked off at 4 p.m., the billionaire and Blue Origin founder started off by sharing elaborate concept images of self-sustaining space habitats reminiscent of the film Interstellar, 
with lush greenery and futuristic homes within its walls. But the real star to talk turned out to be something much closer to home, the moon, where on stage, Bezos took the wraps off a massive model of what will be the firm's first lunar lander dubbed Blue Moon, saying, quote, this is an incredible vehicle and it's going to the moon, Bezos said, according to CNN, which live blogged the event. Now, according to the CEO, the lander has been in development for the past three years and is on track for a 2024 crewed moon landing, falling in line with the five-year deadline revealed earlier this year by Vice President Mike Pence. And it's said that this plan could ultimately serve as a stepping stone for colonization of the moon and deeper space targets. They're saying, quote, it's time to go back to the moon and it's time to stay. Now, just to pause here, guys, I just want to note that it's very striking that all of these big countries like the US, Russia, India, Israel, China, and more, all of the big companies like NASA, SpaceX, Blue Moon, all of them want to go to the moon and they all want to go to the moon before 2029. Almost looking like some sort of breakaway civilization project. Now another thing to note here, which is the revelation, of a 30 million page library that is also heading up to the moon in order to quote, help preserve human civilization. And from that news release, I'll read you a little snippet here that says, quote, when Israel's Beersheet spacecraft launched toward the moon on February 22, it carried a mysterious cargo. Mission planners called it a time capsule, but hinted that that wasn't the whole story. Now the truth is out. The little lunar probe carries a 30 million page archive of human knowledge etched into a DVD sized metal disc. The lunar library, as the archive is known, constitutes a civilization backup to help ensure that our distant descendants never lose humanity's collective wisdom according to Nova Spivak, co-founder of Arc Mission Foundation, the Los Angeles-based nonprofit behind the project. And so, yeah, this is just further evidence here that all of these major space agencies and all of these companies and, and countries who were basically asleep at their desk before where there was any question of going back to the moon are now sitting in the jump seat trying to get there before anyone else uh, with words like enabling a sustained human presence on the moon, the fact that they're all trying to get there before 2029, uh, this 30 million page library that they are quickly trying to get up there, uh, constituting what they call the quote, civilization backup to help ensure that our descendants never lose humanity's collection of wisdom. And so why would we lose it? What is going on and why do we need to be by or, or on the moon, should I say, by 2029? Why the sudden rush by all of these big companies to build landers and to build sustainable habitats on the moon? Or is there something up there, something else that maybe they want to see, maybe they want to discover? Maybe it's the machinery and the remnants of other artificial structures that have been up there since before we even went. And maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, but there's definitely a lot of secrets about our moon for as beautiful as it is, as it sits up in the night sky. Many questions, many secrets, not just about the moon itself, where it came from, what it's comprised of, how it got here in the first place. Because believe me, those things alone are surrounded by millions of questions, let alone what is the deal with all of the artificial and alien structures found down on the surface. Uh, you know, and, and it goes further to show how, how much of a secrecy there is surrounding the moon, uh, which anyone could see after a few years ago when NASA had to come out and publicly admit that they had basically destroyed, lost, and erased thousands of the original Apollo moon landing tapes. And we are talking about tapes with thousands of hours of footage. The original tapes we're talking, the unedited 
tapes of them flying down to the moon, walking on the moon, all their EVAs, each trip back and forth, lost and then erased. And the question was asked, well, how could this company that was in charge of potentially the most groundbreaking and important tapes known to man in our history, the tapes that show our first flight and landing to the moon, tapes that would give us unending help in solving and asking questions about the moon, how could you just lose and erase them? copy them over unless there was something in them you didn't want people to see which yet again opens more doors with questions like well what didn't you want us to see and we go round and round so that's the first thing that i wanted to bring to your attention today guys is why suddenly are we trying to get to the moon um, not just that but why are we trying to get humans to the moon and why are we trying to get millions and millions of pages of documents and music and basically all of Earth's history to the moon uh, as if something were about to happen, which brings us back to this sort of uh, civilization breakaway theory that I discussed from the get-go. So, you know, I'll link you to some articles down below. Um, but yeah, it, it's been very strange uh, surrounding the moon, uh, what's going on with it, why they are trying, why are they in yet another space race to get to the moon when just a couple of years ago they couldn't have cared less. Isn't it interesting how stuff like that suddenly turns around? Very interesting to me. And, you know, after you watch this video, you may sit and say, okay, well, what could be happening on Earth? Let's say they are looking to break away from planet Earth and repopulate the moon with us, move us from here to the moon. What could be happening? Well, it could very well have something to do with all of the mysterious booms and rumblings that we've been hearing underground. You know, I know some of you get bored hearing about me talking about another mystery boom. But I just like to document them. That way we can say, okay, we've documented these thousands. Maybe we can correlate them, bring them together, come back to them at a later time, and put the puzzle pieces together. You know, and so we've had another recent boom that no one can explain. The local authorities can't explain. It almost as if something big is happening beneath our feet. If you guys remember, I posted a video a couple of months back where the underground detectors had picked up something that was moving underground that started its movement all the way up on the northern side of the United States of America up near Maryland and within a matter of 45 minutes to an hour it had gone from one end of the country in a straight line and had ended up at the West California coast so once again a massive object with the ability and the speed to fly underground from one edge of North America across under and to the other edge within an hour's time. And it was picked up by seismographs that were stretched across the country in every single state. You could see the actual blip on these seismographs as this thing would trigger them, as it blasted by underground. And so my question was then, what the hell is moving underground at potentially thousands of miles an hour able to crisscross the United States from one end to the other in a matter of minutes. And so what's what's going on down there? Is something being built? And if it is, who's building it? Is it us building it or is it someone else? Possibly not from this planet building it or possibly from this planet that may have been on or inside this planet long before we were even on this planet. So the theories go on and on, but you tell me what you think about this new sudden moon race and uh, put your comments down below and definitely we will continue to follow it, alright? Uh, so lastly, before we go, I just want to show you uh, a couple of uh, images of a UFO that a viewer sent in. A viewer said, I'm sending you this photo of what I believe to be a very large cigar-shaped UFO. While I was skiing at Hunter Mountain a few weeks ago, I took some photos and videos when I reached the top. I did not notice this object until after I got home and looked at the photo. I'm a big fan of your channel and would love for you to look at this photo. Please get back to me with your thoughts. Thank you. So here is the original zoomed out photo here. Beautiful shot this mountainous range where if you look all the way over to the right here something very strange in a very uh, clear sky no clouds whatsoever something seems to be hovering above one of these mountains down here 
And so here is a zoomed in shot of that particular mountain and the object sitting above it. So, and as you guys can see here, pretty self-explanatory, something's definitely sitting above this mountain. And originally I thought, well, maybe it's just a cloud, but there are no clouds and there were no clouds that day. And this thing just a little bit too black, a little bit too perfectly shaped, very eerie looking shape. A shape we've seen before though uh, in this UFO phenomenon. These things come in so many shapes you almost can't keep track anymore. And as we're looking at the zoomed in shot here, I mean this, this looks just eerie. Totally eerie. It looks like some sort of sinister black craft hovering above this mountain, maybe lifting off from it when, when the uh, image was snapped. We don't know if it was flying over it, hovering, lifting, or just appearing momentarily and then, uh, you know, disappearing back into a wormhole. We just don't know, but it looks to have some long wings, a uh, central area here, uh, kind of saucer-like, um, but yeah, an unidentified flying object, and so... You got something here, buddy. You definitely got something very, very eerie, and I'm happy to add it to the list here. We'll see what more we can find. I'll, I'll try to do some research and see what other um, sightings that I can find that, that share this similar um, architecture and shape to this object here. We'll see what we can find, all right? So anyone else sees something similar, you guys know where to go. Send me an email. Email links, contact links are down below, and just be patient with me as I have thousands coming in each week, and um, I, I usually can't respond, but I will post a video about it if I do think it's worthy. I definitely will post a video, and I will get to it. So, uh, lastly today in the UFO world, we have one more clip here taken, captured during a news uh, presentation on television. So we had a news broadcast here where they're showing some of the, uh, the traffic cameras, uh, and suddenly... As uh, we've seen before on these traffic cameras, they too will catch mysterious things blasting up towards the sky. A lot of water that's got to get off the roadways, and so we're going to be dealing with this for the next hour or so. If you can avoid travel for the next couple hours, it's probably some... Okay, so taken in Corpus Christi, as you guys can see, as the camera pans over this beautiful night skyline, we see a white object, maybe more than one, uh, but definitely one, p uh, potentially two, just blasting up uh, through the sky, up towards the upper atmosphere at an amazing rate of speed. And if you look back, uh, right uh, at the earlier point in the footage, you can actually see what looks like the same object first traveling horizontally from the right edge of the screen. It, it comes out fast, stops, and then does a perfect uh, right-hand turn, you know, 45-degree turn um, at, at a breakneck speed, um, which, you know, our conventional aircraft just simply cannot do. You, you would need more anti-gravity type technology to be able to turn on a dime like that without actually breaking your neck. So you can see it here, it flies in and then boom, perfect right angle and then heads up towards uh, the upper atmosphere. So really cool footage captured above Corpus Christi, Texas. We get a lot of love from the Insomnia team, truth seekers out of Texas, well, all over. You guys are everywhere. I get pictures every day of you guys wearing your secure team hoodies and shirts and it just means the world. So. We're definitely going to keep spreading the word. I appreciate if you spread the word of this channel. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's keep trying to get the truth out. And as always, I'll be right here. So subscribe. Do your best to come back to the channel and find new videos I post. And I will see you all back here in just a bit. Stay safe, guys.